My name is Emily Polster. Thank you for viewing my capstone project on restorative justice practices. Current relevant research indicates that the implementation of restorative justice practices can lead to a greater sense of belonging, decreased recidivism rates, and foster a stronger sense of community. An education application based on these findings is a proposed adoption of restorative justice practices in a school setting in lieu of traditional discipline measures a product that can be readily implemented in an educational setting that could support the implementation of restorative justice practices would be an app or a website that was cross-functional and could be utilized by students, families, educators, administrators to help streamline and facilitate restorative justice practices, systems, and structures within a school setting. Evidence suggests that students, and predominantly students of color, are disproportionately disciplined in comparison to their white counterparts in schools across the country. Additionally, school culture, teacher retention, and student sense of belonging and purpose are also at stake when discussing discipline systems shifting to restorative justice practices. ASMAR 2018 observes North High School in Denver, Colorado, as a school that models exemplary practices of restorative justice. Notably, ASMAR presents, the district has seen its number of suspensions drop even as its enrollment has grown. In 2010, the district suspended nearly 9,000 of 78,000 students, according to district and state statistics. Last school year, it suspended just shy of 4,500 of its 91,000 students. The author proposes that with fidelity, restorative justice practices will result in higher teacher retention, lower suspensions and discipline referrals, and yield a stronger school culture and sense of belonging for students, predominantly BIPOC students who are disproportionately represented in discipline data. Anyon et al. 2014 suggests that alternatives to traditional disciplines such as restorative justice have the potential to decrease discipline disparities for students of color. Calhoun and Pellick of 2010 argue that restorative practices help by prioritizing relationships between students and staff. Davis 2014 suggests that restorative justice can improve social skills, self-esteem, and engagement in the learning process for students. Research suggests that restorative justice continues to have the potential to be an effective response to misbehavior as opposed to traditional justice and discipline response. Each study's findings suggest restorative justice supports a reduction in recidivism, improves social skills, supports a general sense of belonging. Hardiman 2012 suggests teachers must focus on cultivating a sense of belonging in students and foster positive relationships among them, which are fundamental to engagement and motivation. Clearly, the data shows using restorative practices holds the potential to support a greater sense of belonging, impacting student success, and supporting a positive school climate in lieu of traditional discipline structures. I began the project as the middle school lead teacher with the buy-in and support of other middle school teaching staff. The project started mid-year and began with creating a template or a matrix for student behaviors and tiered behavior. Prior to this, there was no matrix or system in place to manage student behavior. Each incident was managed on an individual basis subjectively. I had training historically in using restorative justice practices. I leveraged my prior expertise as well as a book titled Circle Forward, Building a Restorative School Community, written by Carolyn Boyas Watson and Kay Pranis of 2015. On this slide, you will see the example matrix that I created, as well as an example of a restorative-based refocus form that I created for educator use. Notably, there are two brackets of student behavior that I've created as tiered behavior. There is a column for example behaviors, followed by a column that provides traditional discipline responses as well as restorative approaches. And the final column is the column that offers continuity for teacher and administrator follow-up ensuring that the responses are consistent and strategic across the entire school. 
Following the creation of the behavior matrix, I began professional development for adults who would be using the behavior matrix. Simultaneously, I began to educate students on the history of restorative justice. They read informational and expository texts to illustrate the history of restorative justice and the application in the U.S. judicial system, as well as rates of recidivism. In my class, we began using structures, a talking piece, and resolving conflict using RJ-based dialogue strategies. Additionally, I began to educate students by having them read Ben Mickelson's 2001 publication titled Touching Spirit Bear. It's a narrative story about an adolescent who has changed through their own experience as an offender through the restorative justice opportunity. Finally, I created a digital cataloging system to track student behaviors, teacher consequences, behavior contracts, and rates of recidivism to manage the matrix, matrix metrics and overall effectiveness as well as communication. Here you can observe my logic model for the implementation of restorative justice circles, which was used to help identify the scope and sequence of the implementation process. The project had several reasons that it was ultimately unsuccessful. Perhaps the most profound reason was the administrators and adults who were involved did not have the training or the buy-in to support the project. Successes observed were qualitative and largely subjective. Observations were in the growth of student capabilities to speak about their own behaviors and demonstrate metacognitive capabilities. Overall, students who participated in restorative circles using scripted templates seem to later be able to articulate how their own behaviors impacted the emotions of others, as opposed to their counterparts who received traditional discipline. There was no overarching qualitative or quantitative data on student or teacher sense of belonging at this time. Implementation challenges include adult education and buy-in, communication challenges, family and community education, and schedule and structure constraints, to name a few. I propose a user interface web-based application to manage a restorative justice-based behavior management system. Hypothetically, if a student had a classroom-based incident, the teacher could open the web-based application, select the student, and select from a pre-programmed list of behaviors. The application would then prompt the educator to answer a series of questions to determine the tier of the behavior, identify the antecedent, depending on the level of infraction, instruct the teacher on next steps. This could include sending a written perspective form to a student device, asking for an administrator to come support a restorative conversation between student and educator, etc. The application would send information regarding student behaviors, solutions, and ne next steps using the restorative justice framework to families, keeping communication open while holding educators, administrators, and students accountable to predetermined metrics and standards for behaviors and systems for behavior response within the school. Solutions the cloud-based web application offers that address systemic challenges include setting a common framework, student and adult education and resources, antecedent tracking, pre-programmed steps for educators to follow within the classroom, streamline cross-department and school-wide communication regarding behavior consequences and student location within the building, and finally documenting and streamlining communication with families, to name a few. While the data and evidence support the implementation of RJ practices within the school setting, as opposed to traditional systems for discipline, the application of practices and the ability to implement them with fidelity leaves school systems a long way from supporting student sense of belonging. Without consistent, definitive structures and supports to support school systems with the implementation of such novel and profound changes to an already challenging, nebulous, and inherently dynamic subject such as student behavior, the benefits on student sense of belonging are relatively intangible. In order to see large-scale changes in student sense of belonging and ultimately in school culture and student recidivism rates, 
I propose a technology web-based application that would support systems, structures, and ongoing adult and student education in the 21st century in order to curb some of the inherent challenges in the implementation of restorative justice programming within schools.